Good morning, Joan. Good morning, Sandy. Hello, Doug. And Patty Johnson is with us and Michael Page. How are you all? It's um, Thursday. I'm sorry, it's Wednesday and it is the 12th and I am going to um, get on a little bit early. I need to leave um, the house by 930. I've had um, a bit of a problem with a tooth and um, doc went to Dr. Um, Zale and uh, she, Joanne, helped me quite a bit. Um, but it turns out that there's a bad tooth that's got to come out, so I have a, a oral surgery appointment. So um, we'll be heading off to do that uh, in just a little bit. Megan's going to take me. I'll probably be out of pocket, you know, uh, uh, just recovering a bit until tomorrow sometime. So, but I uh, didn't know whether I get a chance to do the devotions today. Certainly wanted to, and it worked out that way. So here we are. Um, we have uh, nine people with us right now. So uh, since I don't have a lot of time, uh, just from a news standpoint, uh, session met last night. A um, couple big things. Um, keep an eye out. Uh, um, the deacons are uh, have a new couple, new ministry thrusts that they're working with, one of which has to do with the, the being able to drop off um, things that are needed for the food pantry. So I believe it's on Monday and Wednesday from 10 to 12. If you'd like to donate, normally we just have that, we have that big um, drum. And as people come into the church, they give it. And of course, with the church being shut down, um, that's been uh, not been as available. So, but realizing that people do want to help out, that we're going to have that. So you can actually come during those hours and um, we'll have that door open and, and have that drum right there. You can just... Um, drop that off. We're going to make sure that we keep wiping down those door handles so everything should be good there. Um, there also, this is really exciting, is that with some of our deacons funds that are, are there, we're going to actually support our frontline health care workers and our local businesses. So uh, we are going to be providing on a weekly basis. Uh, we will move it around, but uh, certainly to uh, nursing facilities and things like that, we are going to order meals uh, for both shifts of, of them and deliver them um, so that the, the front care health care workers could know how much we appreciate all that they're doing and also support local business at the same time. So that's, uh, that's starting and I'm sure that Carrie will be uh, giving that information out um, in, uh, in a constant contact fairly quickly. Uh, the session did meet. We, are, we did two big things. One, we talked about uh, reopening. And we don't count. We certainly don't have a date. We don't know. We know we want to be careful. So we are establishing a committee that's going to be working at looking at all of the things that are necessary to safely reopen and how we're going to go about doing that. So um, that will. Uh, uh, we have uh, two elders that are working on that, so that we'll we'll get that information out. And if you'd like to help out in some way, we're certainly looking for people who have knowledge, whether it be healthcare knowledge public health knowledge, um, things like that. We know that there's going to be restrictions. And one of the things we want to know is, okay, what should we, how should we do this? If we have to have a much reduced capacity in the sanctuary when the time does come to open, how can we, how can we physically do that? And how can we make sure that, um, that everybody has an open and an opportunity? However, we also did decide that we are going to continue the live broadcast uh, even when we can go back to in-person worship because it's been so valuable to people. And we know that there's going to be some people that are be compromised and not uh, really shouldn't be coming in. So we want to maintain that capability too. In fact, uh, the church is going to be investing in some technology, um, affordable technology, so that um, when we do go back to in-person worship that we'll have a more complete experience and you won't be seeing a whole lot of the, uh, the cameras and so forth and everything that's set up in front of the narthex like they are right now, in front of the chancel as they are right now. So that's really good. So uh, exciting. Everybody's really excited. Uh, there was just a sense of uh, gratefulness um, amongst the session and also excitement about uh, things that are going on. So um, those, those are all good things, and I think we should feel good about them. So... Um, I need to uh, to move on here if we're going to be able to read scripture together and then and then pray before I have to go. So um, I want to open up with the morning psalm. This is Psalm 99. So 
Let's listen for the word of the Lord today. The Lord is king. Let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. Mighty king, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called on his name. They cried to the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them in the pillar of cloud. They kept his decrees and the statutes that he gave them. O Lord, our God, you answered them. You are a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Amen. Thanks be to God. And I um, wanted to read out of something that we don't read out of very much, which is Leviticus. We have Numbers, Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy. And actually, Deuteronomy contains some of the same things as, as far as Exodus go, because it's a, re, it's a retelling, do, too. It's the retelling of it, um, of the story of the nation, just as Moses led them in, and now this picks up, um, this picks up with Joshua. Uh, and so there's a, they're kind of the, they go over that thing. But Leviticus is this book that sits between those two, and um, it can get a little boring to read. It's just very repetitive. And um, so it has to do a lot with the, the law, not just the Ten Commandments, but the other 600 and some laws that were handed down um, to, the, to the people of Israel and what they were told that they had to obey. So this is out of Leviticus 19, it's verses 1 through 18. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall each revere your mother and father, and you shall keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make cast images for yourself. I am the Lord your God. When you offer a sacrifice of well-being to the Lord, offer it in such a way that it is acceptable on your behalf. It shall be eaten on the same day you offer it, or on the next day, and anything left over until the third day shall be consumed in fire. If it is eaten at all on the third day, it is an abomination. It will not be acceptable. All who eat it shall be subject to punishment, because they have profaned what is holy to the Lord, and any such person shall be cut off from the people. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field, or gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall not strip your vineyard bare, or gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. And you shall not swear falsely by my name, profaning the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not defraud your neighbor. You shall not steal. You shall not keep for yourself the wages of a laborer until morning. You shall not revile the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind. You shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall not reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord, all thanks be to God. Isn't this wonderful? I, I love this section of Leviticus because we have the Ten Commandments, and they're kind of standalone. Um, and this, uh, this parallels them and uh, overlays them. And actually gives us a little bit more of an expansion of them about uh, specifically what we're supposed to be doing in our lives. And um, I found that if I read this, um, I, I get a much better idea of, of uh, how I should be in my life. And I'm not that way all the time, I, I, or any of us. So, but we work at it. And we can't do it alone, but we can do it with God's help and also in community. So that's one of the 
the biggest things here as we read through this is the fact that there's um, there's multiple layers of reasons for these laws. Um, not only, number one, it's to keep make sure that we keep God sovereign and that we honor God in all that we do. And then as far as some of these consumptions of things and don't eat them on the third day, you know, there's probably a big public health aspect to that too. Um, you know, there was no refrigeration or anything. So if you actually, even if you had meat and cooked it, um, it couldn't sit around. By the third day, it might be going bad. So it was, uh, it was, um, it was prohibited to do that. That would also help uh, the public health at the same time. And some of the other uh, Levitical laws, as far as the dietary things, we think are, are probably related to that too. Um, and, then, and, then it's, and then it's how we relate to one another that moves into these things and how we're not supposed to defraud our neighbor, how we're not to steal, and that we're not, if we owe something, we're to pay it when we, when we have it. We don't, not to hold back uh, to give the laborer their wages when they're due. And the fact that we shouldn't take advantage of people that are uh, of uh, lesser statu stature than us. And by the same token, we shouldn't, when we, when we deal with people, we shouldn't be overly easy on people, thinking that, um, but we need to be fair. We need to be fair. Um, so, there you go. I don't know. It, it's not, this, this, this section of uh, Leviticus isn't preached too much, but I love to put it into conversation with the, uh, the Ten Commandments as we do that. And let's move on to our Gospel reading today. This will be our last reading of the day. This is, uh, we're continuing on with the, in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6. This is verses 19 through 24. And this is Jesus' teaching. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye of the lamp is the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. Uh, this, um, this uh, verse 23 of this, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I've been thinking an awful lot about that of recent times. Uh, as we, as a country and as a world, deal with the pandemic and the economic fallout of that, of people not being able to work, um, and certainly the efforts that we have to get, you know, uh, to keep money in, in people's pockets and keep the economy going, but also the realization that how long can we continue to do this, working out of savings or borrowing against the future? Um, and then, of course, we see some people that say, well, we just need to get back to work. And uh, regardless of what the health aspects of that are. And I always um, uh, soften um, my feelings sometimes about, boy, we just have to get back. Is with, wait a second, um, am, I, am I listening for God's word? Am I, list, if, am I following the lead of the Spirit? Or have I put wealth, money, uh, in front of that? And so it's one of the great ways we can do that is to say, no, so it says here, where your treasure is. Where are the things that you value the most in life? And what is that? Is it really God or is it something else? Uh, because it, it, it doesn't need to be wealth. It could be anything. We make gods of, it, of many, many things. But if that becomes the first priority, if that's where we're storing up um, our, our future, our history, and it's not with God, um, then that means that our eye is not on God and our treasure, our heart is elsewhere. So, um, that's, I hope, just glad I was able to share those things with you today. I'll go back over here to our uh, Facebook page and see that we're up to 19 people. That's about typical for us. That's wonderful. I see Lee and Joanne are with us and Chuck and Joy. Joy and Steve are with us. Good morning. Deanna is with us. Linda Clark is with us. Carol Johnson and Kelly Danson. I think I caught up with you all. 
So uh, if I forgot you, if I didn't see that, I'm sorry about that. Um, it didn't. It just it's tough to to follow the scripture and then follow along with all the people that are joining in on the comments at the same time. So uh, I hope that you have a wonderful day. And um, if you have a time and if you might want to uh, say a prayer for me, I would appreciate that. Uh, I'm not the best dental patient in the world. I get a little bit uh, get a little bit anxious when I'm in the chair, and I know I'm not alone with that. So we are, uh, my wife is taking me and they're going to give me laughing gas and Novocaine or whatever they call Novocaine now, lidocaine. And, uh, and we pray that it's taken, that it can happen fast and that, um, you know, I, it's not the pain that does bother me. It's just that it's people reaching in my mouth and grasping a hold of stuff. And that just, oof, just gives me a shiver right up my, my, uh, my back. So let's pray. Lord in heaven, we thank you for the day that you've given us, and you, we would ask that your Holy Spirit lead us through into ways that we can honor you and also love our neighbor. Lord, we uh, sometimes think that we have to store up treasures for ourselves, and it is right and good that we make plans, but it is also important that we know that you will always provide what we need, that we need not hoard. And that uh, when you give us an ex excess of anything, that we need to look at that as a blessing and say, who and how can we help by spreading this around? So, Lord, we thank you for the lives of freedom that you've given us in this country. We pray for the quick release of, this, of, uh, of the world from this pandemic. We pray for healing for all who are affected. And, Lord, we know that there's a lot of people that are struggling out there. And, Lord, and we ask that uh, that be relieved. And that uh, if they have uh, concerns of who's in charge, Lord, move strongly into their lives so that you can claim them and transform them into being your disciples. Let them know that your love extends to all and to all people. You have claimed us all as your own. We ask all of this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, friends. Good to see you all. And uh, I will... Uh, I'll probably uh, post on Facebook a little bit later tonight, let you know how I'm doing. How's that good? And, um, and if you have something going on, if you have a medical test or if you're not feeling well, I pray for complete healing for you too. Uh, as always, if you need anything, feel free to reach out. Uh, you can send us a Facebook message um, and uh, either Carrie or I will see that. We can respond to that in any way that you need. If you just need prayer, if you find yourself in a situation where you need some help with something, um, just let us know, okay? We are a community of faith, and uh, people that are faithful together love one another, and we do these things for each other. God bless, love you all, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.